couple of folks joining us here. Hope everybody had a nice St. Patrick's Day. It's nice to see everybody again. Um, okay. So you've got some green there, Vinny. I do. Yeah, I got a little bit of. <laughs> I have a little bit of bias. My dad went to Notre Dame, so I was oh, rocking cool. the shimmer today and even got the uh, the face mask as well. So I was, oh. I was definitely covered in a number of different bounds here. Um, awesome. Yeah. So, um, you know, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, before we get started, I'm going to begin as we do with all of our classes and gatherings, and we're going to begin with a quick prayer. So, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Direct we beseech you, O Lord, all our actions by your holy inspirations, and carry them out by your gracious assistance, so that every prayer and good work of ours may always begin from you and by you be happily ended. May all gathered here today, as well as all members of the Villanova family, be kept safe from the COVID-19 pandemic that sweeps over our world, and may we all continue to seek truth, unity, and love in a world torn apart by division, that we, we all may become one in Christ. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, hi, everybody. Uh, hope you're doing well. Hope you had a great St. Patrick's Day. My name is Vinny Girardi, and I'm the Associate Director of Admission and Athletics here at Villanova Preparatory School. Tonight, we're going to be talking about our wonderful Resident Life Program. Very excited for this. I'm um, happy to be joined tonight by two members of our resident staff. Uh, Ms. Sarah Dufresne is our Director of Resident Life, and Ms. Amy Richardson is our EIS Coordinator and College Counselor for International Students. Welcome to you both. Um, Ms. Dufresne, could you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your, what you do here at Villanova? Sure, yeah. Um, so I'm the Director of Resident Life here at Villanova Prep, and so I am overseeing kind of the, the life of the international students or the domestic students that are boarding. I am in charge of their kind of daily um, to and from coming and going. Um, I also have a role in, in kind of outlining and planning the, the spiritual life and different events for the students um, with respect to the faith. And then also have oversight over just the extracurricular, um, kind of the fun activities, the kind of trying to develop the whole person uh, dimension, um, you know, Obviously, the academic life is what they're coming to the school for, but as a, as a boarding program, uh, boarding school, it's really important to make sure that we're developing the whole person. And so I would say my um, main kind of effort is, is really kind of developing both the spiritual kind of emotional uh, side of, of the student's experience here at, at Villanova. Um, it's a great joy to work with wonderful people. Um, you know, uh, you'll hear more from Ms. Richardson about kind of the academic side of things, but um, yeah, it is a real team. Obviously, students that are that are boarding here, we are um, in many ways, you know, their mentors and, and kind of their parental figures. So really kind of the day-to-day -day is spent, for me at least, trying to just foster, you know, personal relationships with these students and kind of aid them during their experience at Villanova. So yeah, happy to be part of the team. All right. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Richardson, tell us a little bit about what you do here at Villanova. <laughs> Hi, I am Amy Richardson, and I am our director of our English Immersion with Support program, also known as our EIS program. I am also our college counselor for resident students, resident and international students. And I also uh, help students with academic support. So when they're struggling in a class, if they need help with tutoring, um, I'm kind of the point person in the dorm for that. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you both for being here. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump right in. And, and for you folks at home, um, if you have any questions, um, certainly please pop those into the Q&A and we'll do our best to uh, uh, answer those over the course of our session today. Um, so you know, this is a question that has certainly been prevalent from I've heard from a number of families is how are we operating uh, at, during, you know, how, how we operate during the, the COVID pandemic and how have you had students on campus? How, how have we made this work? So um, can we just talk about, you know, how has the resident program operated during, you know, the pandemic and how does it hope to plan when we get back to normal? Um, you know, Ms. Dufresne, can you talk about that to start? Sure. So, you know, as we all know, life has been very uh, altered 
and different. Um, one of the things that um, has been a challenge, I think, at, at Villanova is, you know, these students are 3,000 miles away. They're far, far from their home. And, and so our main goal, especially during the pandemic, has been making sure that Villanova feels like that home for them more now more than ever, I would say. Um, and so over the last couple months, um, many of our activities and our trips and, you know, time off campus has been um, limited. Um, but in the last month, as, as things are starting to open up here in Southern California, we've been able to take our students off campus more, kind of giving them, you know, open air experiences to kind of normalize their, you know, extracurricular life. Um, but, you know, as a boarding program, all of those students really are living as one household. And so, you know, daily life for, for the students, at least on campus, is, is very similar to what it was pre-COVID. Um, you know, with some exceptions, some distancing stuff and whatnot. But um, as a dorm, as a resident program, um, we've just tried to kind of maintain as many, you know, in-person activities as possible. We've amped up our, our extracurricular um, weekday campus activities on campus um, to try to kind of, uh, you know, make up some ground for a lot of those off-campus trips we can't make. Um, and yeah, I think I think it's all it's been a learning process for everybody, but the students have really been resilient um, with just kind of their patience with kind of some of the limitations. And of course, they're really happy now that we're able to begin to do more things off campus and, and get back to normal a little bit more. So um, yeah, it's been a challenge, but I think we have really good kids in this program. And so they're willing to, you know, when we give them a reason for why, you know, we can't do this right now, you know, they they don't, they don't really put up a fight, you know? So, um, and I think that's because they know we have their best interest in mind. So yeah, it's a, it's a joy to work with kids, especially when they, you know, are respectful, which we have students like that here. So awesome. yeah. that's really great. Um, you know, can we just talk about how many resident students do we have at the moment? And, you know, what are, I guess, what are some of the activities? Uh, I know you talked about some of the stuff that we've done now, but I guess in a normal session, um, you know, what are, what are some of the activities that we're, we're, we're including for our residents? Absolutely. Right now we have about 30 students uh, that are boarding. Um, we're kind of adding a couple at each week, you know, mm -hmm. a couple week by week, which is really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, during a normal year, um, the resident program is, it hosts a, a whole host of different um, on off-campus trips, um, you know, we have speakers come in and give talks to the students. I, I'll let Ms. Richardson uh, comment a little bit. I, I've actually never been at Villanova during a normal time. I <laughs> took this position about a um, little over 65 days ago. Oh um, so I came in during a, a not, you know, an, an abnormal time. So I'll let Ms. Richardson take this a, a little bit here. But um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, off-campus is living in Ojai, you have just you know, you're, you're 20 minutes to the beach, you're, you know, five minutes from the mountains, um, you know, with a, with a nice downtown district as well, both in Ventura and Ojai. Um, so, you know, the opportunities are kind of endless and I'm going to let Ms. Richardson kind of speak into some of the things that have been done uh, in the pre-COVID world. So, <laughs> so for it. yeah, so pre-COVID, um, our resident life program on weekends, we would have lots of trips. Um, there would usually be one trip either down into Ventura or even down into the LA area pretty much every weekend. We would also go up to Santa Barbara um, and, or go to the beach, really take advantage of the vast array of, of activities that we have in the surrounding area. We are pretty close to LA, you know, by Southern California standards, we're close to LA. Um, but it is a little bit of a drive. But we would make that drive to go to the museums to go to um, the different cultural areas. Um, many of our students like to go shopping. So we would go to different shopping areas for them. Um, but usually try to combine all of that with some sort of cultural experience. So we might go to um, LACMA, the, the LA County Museum of Art, and then we would go to the Grove, which is not too far from that, um, for dinner afterwards. So that's kind of an, an, an example of a trip. Um, so that's kind of pre-COVID trip-wise on the weekends. We would also, we also had um, some programming in our resident life 
where basically like a resident life curriculum where we would have speakers come in, we would have um, speakers on a variety of different subjects who would come in and speak um, to our community about, about different experiences that they had, different activities that, that they could bring to us. Um, really trying to make our campus as robust and active a place at, as possible um, is kind of what, what we looked like pre-COVID. And I would add to, um, you know, obviously being a Catholic school, you know, we have um, opportunities for students to grow in their faith daily and weekly, um, school masses and retreats. Um, I know something that I'm striving to do in taking this position, you know, uh, is make sure that the resident life um, program is a, is a place where students can um, learn more about the Catholic faith and have an opportunity to be invited into our faith tradition as Catholics. And so, um, you know, we've added since COVID, you know, again, needing to do more on campus, needing to be present, you know, hear more, you know, we've, we've, you know, we've kind of bulked out our Sunday reflection series where we have, you know, young men, young women come and give, you know, talks about the faith. We have some seminarians from the area kind of coming in and talking about, you know, what is a religious vocation, these sorts of things. So we've, we've begun kind of um, building up and I think trying to strengthen the the, the, the faith dimension, the spiritual dimension of, of the school. Obviously not all of our Catholics are, not all of our students are Catholic and we welcome anyone and everyone, mm -hmm. um, but we want them to, while they're here at Villanova to have an encounter with, with the faith and an encounter with, with Christ ultimately. So that's something that myself and my staff are, are seriously you know, taking time to um, consider is, is how, do we, how do we grow that dimension of our residential program as well, so. And and, and just, that is, sorry, sorry, just one more thing. Yeah. That, that is something kind of piggybacking on that. Um, we do have mass on campus each Sunday that, that students are invited to attend. We have adoration in the chapel in the evening. Um, so lots of, different exper lots of different opportunities for students to kind of grow in their religious life. Gotcha. Um, and I know, you know, Mr. Frey mentioned it earlier, I know we have currently have 30 students living on campus. We, you know, typical year, I think because of the, the, the COVID and, and uh, the issues with students traveling overseas, it has diminished that number considerably. Normally it's closer to 70 or so. So, um, but, you know, we're making the most with the kids that we have here and, and having the program that we have, it's, 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 it's been great to be able to share it with our kids and, and uh, kind of give them, like you said, a little sense of normalcy while we can. Um, can you talk about, so, you know, are the resident students, um, do they have classes with the day students? Are they separated? Um, you know, what, uh, what's, what's, what's a typical day for, you know, resident students? Um, you know, Ms. Richardson, could you, could you take that for us? Yeah, I can take that one. Yeah. So our resident students go to class right alongside our day students. Um, and we're really one community. While we do have students who live in the dorm and students who live at home with their families, we're one Villanova community. And so when it comes to academics, we're doing, all of our students are doing that together. Um, normal day for a student would be um, getting up in the morning, going to breakfast, mm -hmm. checking in with nurse, maybe going and seeing her. Um, nurse Sabrina is a great asset that we have to our dorm community. Um, she's a mother herself, and she's very much a mother to our students in, in the dorm. She's someone that they can go to. So Nurse Sabrina is there in the morning um, to kind of greet students, welcome students. They get breakfast. Um, in COVID times, it kind of depends on whether they're in cohort one or cohort two. Um, if their cohort is in session, then they would go to in-person classes that day. Um, and they would be in in-person classes from about eight o'clock in the morning until three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, if, they, if their cohort is not in person, then they are in online classes for that same period of time. Um, we, when school gets out at the end of the day, our teachers in regular time, if we weren't in COVID, our teachers would, would be available in their classrooms um, for students to come and get extra help from. Um, and this is a really great thing about Villanova and really something that, that I love about, about our campus is just the availability of our teachers. 
our teachers are pre-COVID, our teachers would be in their rooms for anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour after school for students to just be able to drop in and get extra academic help. Mm-hmm. So um, 3 p.m. the school day ends, go see teachers, get extra help. Um, many of our students play sports. So at that point, they would they, they might go to sports practice. They might have an activity. Um, one thing that we've um, kind of added in the dorm is there's a, um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, there's an activity period for our students in the dorm at four o'clock. And Ms. Dufresne, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have, you know, students coming from all over, different, different interests, different uh, gifts, whatnot. Um, but we do have um, during the week um, a couple mandatory activities that we that we have our our resident students participate in, and that could be anything from, you know, everybody's doing Mad Libs, you know, everyone's doing some sort of art project, everyone's out on the lawn, you know, doing relay games, those sorts of things, um, you know, and we try to cater to the different interests that our students have, and that's something that's I think unique about a a, a boarding program, a, a residential life program is you really do get to know the habits and loves of your students, you know, cause they're living, they're living on site, you know, they're living at Villanova as their home. And so something that myself and, and my staff, we try to, you know, cater to the different, you know, the different kind of sources of enjoyment that our students have. Um, and, you know, our campus is just, we're, we're blessed with a lot of wonderful facilities. Mm-hmm. We have a beautiful art studio. You know, we have places for students to perform music and record music you know, a beautiful, you know, I don't know if anybody's calling in from, you know, other states or overseas, but the weather is just beautiful, kind of 364 out of 365 days a year. So, you know, we have a beautiful field, gymnasium, you know, tennis courts, beautiful nature trail. I mean, it, it, the list is long in terms of what our students can do, you know, throughout the week and, you know, when they're outside of class, but yeah, those 4 p.m. activities are kind of uh, pinpointed to just get everybody, you know, out and about engaging with one another, engaging with the staff. Um, so kind of a time that's carved out for kind of mutual, you know, community building. So um, then there would be dinner time. Um, that's mm-hmm. at about 5.30 to 6.30 is dinner. And then after that, students have a little bit of free time. And then seven o'clock is study hall. So seven o'clock for, from seven to nine, we have a set time where everyone is expected to be studying. There is no, like, I don't have homework tonight. Okay, read a book. Um, everybody is expected to be doing something academic from that seven to nine time period. Um, Sunday through Thursday. Um, And during that, I'm available as a, as a teacher to help and support students. Um, We also have another um, recent graduate, recent college graduate who has joined our team, Ms. Salapari, who is available to help and support students um, in their academics during study hall. So yeah, it's a full day for, for our kids, um, but that's kind of what they signed up for in a sense, mm-hmm. you, like having that routine um, and, you know, with our boarding community, um, whether they're domestic or international, like the, the greatest benefit is that it, it really is a, a great preparation for college. Um, you know, and this, there have been studies that have been done as well, where, you know, students that have had the boarding school experience are just, just trans- um, infinitely more prepared uh, for their first day of college because they know what to expect, because they know how to do their own laundry. They have been accountable um, and they show up to class and they do all these things. So um, it's just, it's good to have that routine. They get a good head start on that here. So um, now, Ms. Richardson, I know we talked a little bit, I know it's in your title, um, EIS English Immersion support, I believe. Um, Can you talk a little bit about what that is, please? Yeah, so our English Immersion with Support program is for students whose first language is not English. So a lot of students, um, we have a good good number of our international students who need just a little bit of extra help and support. Um, 
at some schools, this might be called ESL. Um, at some schools, it might be called ELD. You'll see it by a variety of different names and titles, depending on what school you're looking at. But for us, it's, it's EIS, English Immersion with Support. So what does that mean? That means that our students are, are students who are learning English. They are in classes with all of our native English speakers. They are taking um, every single one of their classes right alongside our native English speakers, but they might need a little bit of extra help and a little bit of extra support with that. So what we do is we provide an English language development class for them during the school day. And what that class does is it's really focusing on improving their grammar, improving their writing, improving their speaking and improving their listening skills. I like to think of it kind of as replacing their foreign language because they don't need a foreign language. Yeah. Um, English is their foreign language. So that's really what that class is for them. And then after school, they take a support class that is really specifically looking at their English language arts class and giving them a little bit of extra help. Um, I teach that class and we do things like pre-reading. We do things like um, kind of workshopping essays and really looking at what areas do the students need help with. Very much everything in the program is focused on the students' needs. So we assess the students regularly. We assess them in, um, in August, we assess them in November, and we assess them in April to see how their English is, is progressing. We use um, a version of the TOEFL test for that. And we really try to make sure that we're improving and working on the areas that our students need to work and improve on. So it's a very individualized program because of that. Um, and also as part of that, we are a TOEFL IBT test site. So when it comes time for our students to go to college, they don't have to um, go and find a, a test site off campus, they can take the IBT right here on campus. So yeah, it's a great program. Is there a way for, let's say if a, a student is progressing in a certain amount that they, you know, if they're, if they're very comfortable with English, um, if, they, if they come a long way, are they able to test out of this program? Yeah, great question. So with that assessment that we do, with that regular assessment that, that we do, um, definitely students, test out sometimes they'll test out mid-year mm -hmm. maybe they just need like one one semester of help and then they're mm -hmm. ready to move on um and sometimes it's at the end of the year so we have students who are in the program for one semester we have students who are in the program for one year and then sometimes students need a little bit of extra help and they're in for um, maybe their freshman in their sophomore year maybe they're maybe their freshman sophomore in their junior year um it really goes back to the needs of the individual students and looking at what does each individual student need to reach their full potential. Gotcha. Um, so kind of going back into the ins and outs a little bit of the dorm, um, are, are residents able to leave whenever they want? Like what's the policy there? What kind of freedom do they have? Can they, are they, can they, when can they check out? Like what's, what, what, what can they, I guess, what can they do? Um, yeah. Would you take that, Mr. Fring? Absolutely. So um, now in these times, um, for, for many, for, for months, we haven't allowed students to go off campus um, because of COVID restrictions. Um, but in normal times and backing up a bit, and now students are able to leave campus, they are able to Go off campus for the day and then come and then come back to the dorm at, in the evening. Um, but during during a normal school year, um, students can check out overnight. They can go, you know, spend the night at a friend's house in town. They can, you know, if they're from LA, they can go down to, you know, see their family on the weekends. That kind of a thing. All of it's just permission, you know, permission given by parents, and then the school approves, you know, the the checkout. Um, but you know it we want the sort of student who, you know, wants to be here and wants to participate in the life that we have to offer. But yeah, absolutely. Students are allowed to leave campus, um, you know, and the staff is always apprised of, of um, you know, off-campus trips and visits and whatnot. So 
so yeah, there we know where everyone is at all at all points. Um, but yeah, there is a sort of you know we encourage students to spend time with their family and, and that kind of a thing. Um, you know if they're if they're in the area and you know some of our international students will have you know an, an aunt or an uncle or a cousin that lives locally and so we encourage trips you know to visit to visit folks like that as well. So, um, are students allowed to have a car? That's that's going to be something. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Miss Richardson <laughs> does, though. Um, for the most part, it's going to be students in their junior and senior year. Um, when it comes to really leaving campus in the past um, during the week, students have kind of been limited to um, so in the past, kind of pre COVID students in ninth through 11th grade wouldn't necessarily check out on their own during the weekend. So they don't really have much of much of a need for a car. Sure. Um, but our seniors will sometimes wanna bring a car to school and we allow that. Um, there's a form that parents have to fill out and students have to fill out. Um, basically showing us proof of insurance, proof of all of the, all, all the good legal stuff that, that, that the state of California requires. Um, and then students would would be allowed to have a car pre-COVID. Yeah, so of course. <laughs> All this stuff is a lot. A lot of this is pre-COVID material. Um, so you know, uh, while these, while these, uh, while our residents are living on campus, you know, uh, our our dorm staff tends to be the parents essentially for these students. Um, so if you know, can you just talk about a situation? Let's say. If, and maybe a student's playing on their phone too much or they're, or they're staying up too late and playing video games. Um, you know, how, how do you, how, how does the dorm staff kind of control that situation and, and kind of fix that? Yeah, that's a really good question um, because I think it, it hits on a point that I think is important in, in a healthy um, boarding program and a healthy, um, you know, residential life dynamic. You want your staff to be the type that can accompany the students um, in, in all things, basically, right? So, you know, modeling for them, you know, a spiritual life, modeling for them, you know, a virtuous life, modeling for them, you know, the things that we would hope, you know, a Villanova graduate would, would grow into and, and have fostered in their lives. Um, so if, um, you know, the, I think the health of a, of a boarding program can be measured by, you know, how, how much is the staff engaging, you know, with the students? How much are they accompanying them through their joys and sorrows and struggles you know, as a, as a high school aged person. Um, so, you know, in, in exam, you know, in a, if someone's playing video games too much and, and, you know, falling asleep in class and, um, you know, we, we, get, we come to know that pretty quickly, I think in a, in a small community like Villanova, you know, we are in touch, Ms. Richardson is, and I are in touch. We, you know, you know, if something comes to my attention that's about a student that's affecting them on an academic level, you know, it's important for she and I to know about that. And of course the teachers and the extended community. So there's a sort of oversight from, you know, different angles of oversight. Um, but an example of, you know, video gaming and that kind of a thing, um, you know, what I've told and what I encourage in my staff is, um, you know, you, you go up and you, you, you find that student and you say, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna do this now, you know, and you actually accompany them. I think part of, you know, what young people need is they need mentors who don't just say, hey, come on and do this now, you know, we're going to do this together, you know, so trying to foster a spirit of accompaniment and, and really that sort of, um, you know, friendship and, and mentorship, I think is really important. So if there's any, any issue, you can kind of insert any variable, if there's some sort of issue that, that comes up in the life of one of the students, um, it's, it's close accompaniment. And, you know, um, I think it's really important thing, you know, to be kind of have that discipleship mentality, you know, we want to be the kind of witnesses and the kind of models for these young people that we would hope, you know, they could grow into as well. And if we're not modeling it, then, you know, there's a problem there. So that's something that's really on, on my mind to really have the staff be able to be present with the students and, and to take them off their devices, you know, and sometimes that's a little painful, but I think mm -hmm. when the staff and, and, and people in the Villanova community can model for a student, you know, Hey, this is, this is the kind of culture we're trying to build, or this is what we're trying to do now. And Kind of model it for them they're they're going to be more apt to to follow versus just seeing it as a rule you know what i'm saying so yeah, for sure and i think it's the next question is i feel it kind of goes along that same line of 
Um, you know, if we have a student that might be uh, having difficulty academically, um, you know, how, what, are, what is the process, I guess, to kind of help get them back on track? Um, is it more time in study hall? Is it um, just kind of um, having individual conversations with the student? Like how, how do you help a resident student when they're not earning the best grades? That could be a question for Ms. Yeah. Richardson as well. So yeah. um, I would say it's all of the above. <laughs> it okay. is, it's conversations, it's more study hall time, it's individual plans, it's looking at what what exactly is holding a student back what's what's preventing them from be from being successful and that's different for every student there's not you know one just just set answer to that question so if it's missing assignments and they are fully able to do the assignments they just aren't doing them then it might just be extra study hall time it might be supervised study hall time where they they can't study in their room and they need to come down to the resource center and study with us down here um, if it's that they're not doing well because they don't understand the content then it's going to be tutoring mm -hmm. um, we have one of the really great things about living in a dorm community is that you have all of your fellow dorm members who can help and can tutor and so we really do take advantage of peer tutors and the you know the seniors will tutor the freshmen and and it's really great to see that to, to see that community grow and see that um, and see those relationships develop um, so we are here ultimately we're here to to support the students through their academics and so we we check and we make sure that students are doing well. Um, we check grades every week. And um, if I notice that a student isn't doing well, I'll let Ms. Dufresne know. And um, she and the dorm staff will talk with the student. And then I'll also meet with the student and we will kind of work together to, to come up with, with a plan for, for improvement. Um, and do, does the whole dorm community, do you, I know every, everybody's kind of around each other all the time, uh, but are there like kind of weekly meetings is kind of like, here's what's coming up, um, you know, or we have mass next week or um, we have, uh, you know, when, in, in non-COVID times, we have this uh, excursion, we're going to go down this trip. Um, you know, how, how do we kind of update students or residents, I should say? That's a great question. Yeah, so we have a meeting on Thursday nights mm -hmm. for um, the dorm students um, to kind of, you know, it's positioned there at, on that Thursday evening, just kind of looking into the weekend. Um, you know, if we have solidified plans, we're going to announce our plans to the students. We're going to, you know, try to rally them, get them excited for whatever is going on on Saturday or Sunday. Um, and then on a daily basis, there's um, night prayer in the evenings at, at nine o'clock, right after study hall, 9.05. Um, and that's an opportunity to kind of have a daily check-in with the students. Um, our chaplain, Father Barnaby, is leads that night prayer, um, accompanied by our, our dorm staff as well. Um, and that's just kind of a natural kind of close the day and, you know, kind of a check-in also kind of provides for an announcement period as well. Um, but throughout the day, we utilize a, a, a number of different platforms to uh, make announcements to our students and update them about little things here and there. Um, we utilize Google Classroom quite a bit, um, which is something that the teachers utilize here at Villanova. Um, but we also use that within the, the resident program as a sort of message board and an alert system. Um, and nothing beats, you know, a knock on the door as well. So we also incorporate that sort of, um, you know, knocking in, checking on people, that kind of a thing. But it's generally how we, how we do it. Um, awesome. Well, we actually had one quick question come in from the audience, and um, I think I'm actually I'm, I'm uniquely qualified to answer because I, I work in athletics um, as well in admissions. And so our question was, are sports still going on during COVID? And the, and the answer is yes. Um, we've had um, several teams practicing on campus um, for a few, a couple months now. Um, with the pr particular protocols, very strict protocols put into place. Um, so we've had uh, our, our water polo teams are practicing as well as volleyball for a while. We just got, uh, we just added baseball, started practice. Tennis is now practicing golf. 
Um, all of these things were kind of ramping up. We were hoping um, to be able to participate in competition. Um, and then the state of California recently released some new guidelines uh, that allowed it to happen. Um, so uh, last week we were able to host two water polo games on campus for the first time in a year. Um, so it was just, it's, it was, it was such a great opportunity to give that for the kids who have been working so hard and just to have, you, you can't replace competition. And we're, we're, we're fortunate we were able to do that. Um, so as I mentioned before, it's looking like baseball will be playing tennis, golf, um, and uh, uh, swimming as well. And there's a potential for um, basketball. Um, that's another kind of uh, hurdle with the state that they have to kind of clear those um, those uh, particular protocols and kind of make that safe. But so that's a potential. But yes, to answer your question, sports are going on. Uh, we're very excited, and um, it's just it's it's great to have kids on campus. Um, looks like next question that just came in here. Um, you know. I, I think, let's see here. Can we talk about how many Chinese students do we have on campus at the moment? And, you know, what, uh, I guess, how are they been involved um, in the in the community? Ms. Richardson, would you take that? Yeah, I can take that. Um, so currently on living on campus, yeah. we have about five Chinese students, I think, living on campus right now. Yeah. Um, in okay. our larger resident community, um, we have, I'm going to have to think how many Chinese students we have. Um, we probably have in our, lar in our larger dorm community, we probably have, I'm going to say like between 20 and 30 Chinese students that, that live in the dorm. Mm -hmm. Many of them right now are in China. Mm -hmm. And so what we've we've done quite a few things to help those students to um, continue in their academics while they've been over in China. Um, one thing that we've done is we are a Google school, which unfortunately does not work in China. So we've set up a separate platform for our students in China. We use um, Canvas for our students in China um, so that they don't have to use a VPN. Um, we also set up Microsoft email addresses for all of our students in China, again, so that they don't have to use a VPN to get to their, their Google email. Um, our, our teachers have been really flexible and really great about um, if there's something that they want them to, to watch on YouTube, they will do a recording of it in, in either like a Zoom recording or w just finding some other way to, to record YouTube because YouTube is also not available in China um, and kind of really trying to work around that. Um, Ms. Salapari, who joined us, who, who has joined us, she actually works two days a week early in the morning here. She works um, from 5 a.m. to about 9 a.m. Um, California time so that students can meet with her um, before the before the school day starts. And then we also have um, a small group of students who are um, not able to, to come. And so they're doing kind of an alternative program and some of our teachers are teaching in the evening. So we've really tried to make it as easy as possible. Sure. It, it, it's definitely been difficult in, in COVID mm -hmm. um, with students in a variety of different time zones, but we've done what we can to, um, to really accommodate the needs of mm -hmm. our students. Awesome. And then just one final question, and, um, and then we'll wrap this up. So um, are parents allowed to come to campus at will, for instance, to be on campus with their children, take them out for a bite to eat, or are there specific weekends where parents are invited to come? Um, yeah. Mr. Dufresne, would you mind taking that, please? Absolutely. Yeah, parents are more more than welcome to come and come on campus. Of course, we ask that students, you know, be taken off campus, not encroaching upon class time, but students are, and parents are, are welcome to, to come up and, and, and take their students out for a bite to eat, that kind of a thing. Um, and then there are certain parent weekends that the school puts together um, to, you know, kind of formally welcome parents to campus, give tours, you know, encourage them to enjoy the kind of Ojai 
you know, Southern California lifestyle for, for periods of time, that kind of a thing. But, but yeah, the short answer to that is, is parents are welcome to come on campus. We just have all visitors check in, in our, at our office um, and uh, yeah, kind of take it from there. But yeah, we, I personally, as head of the, the resident program, I encourage that. It's good for students to see their parents um, and we welcome, welcome anybody who would like to do that. Awesome. Well, that is all I had for you guys tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Ms. Richardson. Thank you, Ms. Dufresne uh, for, for joining us. And thank you for all of you at home uh, for, for joining us today. We hope you found this to, to be a very informative uh, session about our, our, our resident life program. Um, and we will host a, our final Wildcat Spotlight uh, on March 30th. And we'll be talking about student activity, student life. So uh, please do join us for that. You can register for that at villanovaprep.org slash visit. And, um, and it'll be just like this form over here, another, another webinar to, to, to talk to you guys about. So well, thank you again for your attendance tonight. Have a wonderful rest of your St. Patrick's Day and go Wildcats. <laughs>